So where do you want to start? Well, um, I suppose we should start with a discussion of where England are. That's what everybody yeah. wants to know. The World Cup is so close. Uh, the good news is that Michel Platini said that England are lions in winter and lambs in summer. This is a winter World Cup, so surely uh, England are lions. Um, the bad news is that Michel Platini is completely discredited. <laughs> <laughs> The other bad news is if you go through, as I was reading tonight in The Times, England's first choice defence, every mm. single one of them is injured. And it was, it was always going to happen. I mean, if you look at France, the axis of their team is missing. Kante and Pogba. So it was always going to happen that people were going to be injured and won't have time to recover. And Chilwell got injured last night. So the squads that announced this time next week will have a better idea. But I think if we've learned one thing being England fans, and there'll be a few times this evening that Paul and I will look at each other and go, yeah, we lived through that, we lived through that. If there's one thing England have learned is you cannot take injured players to the World Cup. I mean, you know, the shambles of Beckham in Japan, it was, you know, he, he leapt out of a tackle to protect his metatarsal and Brazil went and equalised. And obviously the whole Wayne Rooney shenanigans... Four remember, years later. Do you remember Wayne Rooney turning up at the hotel in, yes. in, in Germany, walking into the <laughs> foyer late because he just repaired his metatarsal and announcing the big man is back in town? The big man is back in town. And then he, <laughs> and then he went onto the training ground and hit a ball too hard in, in training, trying to, you know, um, overcompensate for being away and um, twanged his hamstring or his calf or something. It was <laughs> injured for the rest. There are a lot of stories like that yeah. in, 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 in the... Uh, I mean, I think story. Platini has a point, doesn't it? Because we yeah. know that throughout the, throughout the intensive period of the league season that we have, and we always have players normally in the last stage of the Champions League, they are knackered in the heat come the middle of, end of June. So he's right, if only they were all fit. And of course, if only England were in a better place mentally after... A pretty lousy run of results. Yeah, I mean, I, I go the other way on that. So the England team has reached a semi-final and a final in the last two tournaments. That is immensely promising. And it's a huge improvement on what I think of as the Nadir for the England team, which was losing to Iceland in Nice um, in 2016. But I came out of the stadium that day thinking, that's it. I'm, I've had it with this. this is, England are not tournament contenders and never will be. Two years later, they're in a World Cup semi-final, so it teaches you not to not to despair. England fans have had good reason to despair, but something always comes along. I mean, sports about uh, renewal, obviously, and England have renewed themselves. And, and so, when you study the, the the history and the tournament history over this long in a book like this, you 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 realise that um, a little wobble in the summer, and England have had one, isn't terminal. I mean, we were talking about fans earlier, and there's, there's this idea that if things go wrong for three months or things just dip a little bit, regress a little bit, then suddenly, you know, the whole thing's falling apart. That's a slightly English notion, and there's no reason why Gareth Southgate and this squad shouldn't go to Qatar and get themselves going again and be, be serious contenders. Mm. Well, I think the one thing is we will have to learn one fundamental lesson, particularly from the Italy match, is that when we, you know, when we need to have the ball, we need to be able to keep the ball. That's always been England's problem, hasn't it? It's always been England's fundamental problem, even though we've got a great striker at the moment. And, you know, you'll have your views on, everyone will have their views here, which is a valid as the next person's about who's in midfield or whatever, or the goalkeeper and everything. But, but that's always England's issue, isn't it? They can't control the ball and therefore the tempo of the game, slow it down, speed it up when they need to. But listen, I, I take your point. I, t I do take your point. And actually, I, I was thinking about it this morning. I knew we were going to talk. It, it may be a bit of an old fashioned view, but fundamentally for me, Gareth Southgate has done almost the most important. Obviously, the most important thing would be to win something. But everybody wants to win something. <laughs> but no, but seriously, the next, next most important thing has been to reconnect the public with the England team. And that is really fundamentally important when you think about what our Premier League is like and how big our clubs are and how more and more of them, we've got a Newcastle fan here this evening and getting overseas investment and how they want to be in the Champions League and they want to win this. There has been enough occasions in the last 30 years that you and I have done this job where players have said to managers, I don't yeah. want to join up with England. Just yeah. tell them I pulled a hamstring. Harry Redknapp will tell you this. Yeah. Tell them I pulled a hammy. And the fact now, and there are lots of reasons for it. St George's Park, Gareth Southgate, they've all played together since they were 18. I think that's. I think that is for me. That is as significant as winning something. I really do. Completely. I mean, he he, he knew when he took that job over. When you think about what a, the context of him taking over, so England had gone out against Iceland in Nice, and then Sam Allardyce had lasted one game in sixty-seven days. I yeah. mean, 
the whole operation was on its knees. And the players, I call it disengagement syndrome. So when, when things start to go wrong with England players, they, the, the message they get, and somebody said this to me in 2010 in South Africa, that the thing they think is, here we go again. Yeah. They get fatalistic. They think it's an inquest waiting to happen. They think the thing's collapsing in front of them, and they start to disengage. And they start to want to be back at their clubs where they can play Champions League football. They're in a safer environment. They're not, they're not going to get hounded. Um, and, they, and they don't want to be there. And this was a story, really. Certainly, particularly from 2007, I think, to 2016, England players, or some of them dreaded England duty. Yeah. Yeah. And Gareth Southgate could see that. And he realised, I mean, apart from reconnecting with the public, he realised that he had to reconnect the team with what they were meant to be doing. So he worked a lot on, on uh, togetherness and identity. And he took up all these positions, ethical positions, that made the manager, th made the players think that he was kind of on their side and that they pulled together, it, it, you know, they had a chance. And, and that's the way it's gone. And that's one of the reasons why I think people shouldn't bail out on the team no. just because of a difficult summer. And, and, and I'm really struck by... Uh... A lot of people have views on Gary Neville, you know, read, you know, read Gary and all that. I mean, you know, I, I, he's very good company, but I was really struck working with him in the build up to the Euro final that day and live saying to him, Gary, you know, you won absolutely everything as a player. What would it mean? What is the difference if these players win today, winning something for England for the first time since 1966, compared with anything they might win for Manchester United or Chelsea or whatever? And he went, it's a different galaxy. I was really struck by that. Mm. I, di I didn't know what his answer was because I deliberately didn't ask him beforehand because I wanted to react naturally and normally like you would at home. And I was really struck when he was going, for England to win tonight would just be completely stratospheric compared. And, and I think, um, and my point in telling that story is I, I, I believe that this, for this group of players, they know that. And they've got lots of players from Man City who've won everything and, and Liverpool and so forth. Yeah, I know the captain plays for Tottenham, but they've got plenty of players who've won something. Yeah. 